What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Michael J. And today, I'm back again with a very, very special video. Today, I'll be explaining why Tupac is the greatest of all time. To celebrate the 48th birthday of the late rapper, I'll be taking a look back at his enduring legacy, what he's done for hip hop, and explain why he is truly the GOAT. Now, some of y'all could disagree with this list, and if you do, that is okay. But I just hope y'all really enjoy this. Making these was my mission. Moving up for this shit to get my mama out the kitchen. And why must I sock a fella just to live large like Rockefeller? Now, Tupac's music definitely has had a huge impact on my life. And it definitely has got me through depression. Which is why I believe that Tupac was truly like the essence of an MC. Whether it came to his poetic skills or his stage presence, there's probably no other rapper who has left a greater legacy than he did. From being a social activist to a violent misogynist and having the word thug life tattooed across his belly and basically living by that motto every day, Tupac's music has transcended music like so many of the greats in the past. And while it's just a real shame that people in this generation just seem to have no respect for Tupac and just basically shitting on his legacy, whether it comes to likes of Ultra Guido who called him a bitch ass nigga, or Lil Xan saying this about Tupac. Two. The born music. Say that one more time. The born music. And especially those motherfuckers at Hot 97. I swear to God, I, I despise them so much. Because every time they bring up Tupac, they always just love shitting on him and just basically rewriting his history. Especially when it comes to punk bastard Flex, who waited 20 years. Yes, 20 years to diss Tupac knowing the fact that he was too pussy to say it to his face. Which just shows that he's nothing but a fucking coward and a rat bastard. But anyways, fuck Hot 97. My point is, if motherfuckers don't like Tupac, that is okay, but you cannot, and I repeat, you cannot discredit or take away what this man has not just done for hip-hop, but for the world as well. Because even throughout that short amount of time that Pac was living, he accomplished a lot of things that most people wouldn't even accomplish until they're like in their 30s or 40s. But anyways, let's just break it down. I stop a stare at the younger, my heart goes to him, a chest that was stressed that they under, and nowadays things while some people could argue that Tupac is not necessarily the greatest MC of all time, which is fair because whenever that discussion comes up, it's very subjective. But out of all rappers, Tupac hands down is definitely the most influential one. Because ever since his death, he's definitely had a massive impact on the culture of hip hop. Because Tupac's definitely one of those rappers who's basically in everybody's top five, including mine as well. And after his death, it just seemed like everybody wanted to be Tupac, whether it comes to Lil Zayn and most notably Ja Rule, who's faced some heavy criticism from biting Tupac imagery, from calling him a Tupac wannabe and also dubbing him as quote Machiavelli. Pac has also inspired some of these rappers of this generation as well from J. Cole, YG, but if there's one current MC who Tupac has inspired the most it'd be none other than Kendrick Lamar who's considered to be one of the greatest MCs of this generation. It's no secret that he's always credited Pac for his career and always shared his love and respect for Pac as he explained this on a 2012 interview. How much does Tupac influence you on this album? Because I know you're very influenced by him, period. But on this album, did you think of him in any way in his storytelling and the yeah. way he writes? Or Definitely, definitely. Um, storytelling was the, the whole niche of this album. I wanted mm -hmm. to bring that back into the game. And what Pac showed me was really, you know, not being scared to show, you know, vulnerability in your music, you know, because that makes, you know, the biggest connection, you know, with the audience. Yeah. And fun fact, Kendrick originally wanted to name his album To Pimp a Butterfly, To Pimp a Caterpillar, but instead of using the T and the O, he wanted to use the T and the U, which was an abbreviation for Pac's name. Let's see so many motherfuckers wanna take a piece. Come and equip with some shit, niggas just can't believe. I pull a trick from my sleeve. Oh, shit, we only got two weeks to do this whole album. Complete it. Mix it down and everything. We don't have time or the luxury to spend all of this time doing one song. We don't have it. We got to somehow find a way that we could double up on it. Because I did my whole album. I know it ain't all of that, but I did my whole album like three songs a day. Because I was just laying it, rocking it, then getting off. You can mix it later and have niggas that love being in the studio all night, just adding a drum beat at a time and shit. You can do that after the rappers leave and shit. These niggas that love being in the studio, they just love listening for the right kick. But for while we in here and you got every, you got like eight rappers here and everybody drinking and smoking and shit, man, get that beat popping. Throw them niggas on the track. You catch everybody freestyling. Throw them niggas on the track. Boom. That's the, the name of the song. Is whatever this nigga said his word, last word was. We do it. Put it down. Then after we finish, we walk out. Everybody be here and listen to it. Be like, this the hook. We go in there and lay the hook. If we don't like that hook, the nigga lay another hook. Come back out here. You know, race scratches or whatever. That be the song. 
What definitely makes Tupac the GOAT in my eyes is definitely his work ethic. It's just simple as that. And while it's a damn shame that he did die while he was at the peak of his career, but from 1991 to 1996, Pac made like 20 years worth of music. And he was known to be in the studio every single day to make two to three songs. Because it was very clear that Tupac never knows when his last days were coming, so he just probably thought to himself like, you know what, fuck it, let me just record so much material because I never know when my time is up. So with that, he made sure to be in the studio every day to work his ass off. And the evidence with this is that after his death, a bunch of his material and songs were released because usually when an artist dies, they would have little to zero material after their death. But when it came to Tupac, that was a whole nother story. Plus, after his death, six posthumous albums were released. From the 7 Day Theory, Are You Still Down, Until the End of Time, Better Days, Lord to the game and Pac's life and to this very day Pac has also has hundreds of other songs that are unreleased and with this it pretty much proves that Tupac was a hard worker I see no changes wake up in the morning and I ask myself it's like worth living shut up myself I'm tired of being poor and even worth some black my stomach Tupac did two things that forever changed hip-hop. The first thing he did was making the first ever hip-hop pre-prison album. Because for those who don't know, back in November of 93, Tupac was wrongfully convicted for raping a woman in a hotel room. And before he was incarcerated in February of 95, he recorded the album pretty much making amends with his demons and telling his most inner and most darkest secrets. And while being locked up, his third studio album, Me Against the World, was finally released in May of 95. And the album did very, very well. Because usually while you're locked up, it's really, really hard for an artist to promote their album but it did very well for Pac especially when it came to tracks like So Many Tears, Dear Mama, and Lord Knows and eventually a few rappers started doing the same from Lil Kim with her album The Naked Truth while she was locked up in 2005 and T.I. with Paper Trails while he was locked up back in 2008 the second thing that Tupac did that forever changed hip-hop was making the first ever double disc hip-hop CD album with the release of his fourth studio album All Eyes On Me which is definitely his most popular album and it's definitely my favorite one from Tupac. After Suge Knight bailed him out of prison in October of 95, he would immediately work on the album which he would finish within two weeks. And once it was finally released in February of 96, it became a huge success both critically and commercially, charting at number one on the US Billboard 200, selling over 10 million records, and even going diamond as well. And after this numerous rappers started following Tupac's blueprint. First you had Biggie with Life After Death, Wu-Tang with Wu-Tang Forever, and last you had Jay-Z with the blueprint too, The Gift and the Curse. Tell each and every person out there, don't forget about that clicking up sh thing, you know what I mean? Be to yourself. Stay to yourself. Trust nobody. Trust nobody. After dog. You know what I mean? Straight yeah. up. My closest friends did me in. My mm -hmm. closest friends, my homies, people who I done took care of their whole family. I done took care of everything for them, looked out for them, put them in the game, everything turned on me. Fear is stronger than love. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Fear is stronger than love. All the love I gave didn't mean nothing when it came to fear. So it's all good. But I'm a soldier. I always survive. I constantly come back. You know what I mean? Only thing that can kill me is death. That's the only thing that'll ever stop me is death. And even then, my music will live forever. And the number one thing I always feel like people always loved about Pac is who he was as a person because of the way how he's very outspoken about the things he said and not giving a fuck what anybody thought. Because we all know Pac was very known to be a gangster rapper, but he was very conscious as well. Because of the way how he's rapped and talked about the things that was going on in his community, whether it came to speaking about social issues, police brutality, poverty, and even talking about how the rich always kept getting richer and how the poor just always remained poor. And with this, it pretty much showed that Pac just had a lot of balls to say a lot of things that most other rappers didn't really have the balls to say, which is very inspiring. And I think that just about wraps up this video. Thank y'all so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed watching this. Please give this a big thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like it. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel for the videos. I'm your boy, Michael J, and peace.